Hello, my beautiful ladies. Tomorrow I am getting my hair done. Thank God. Uh, I mean, honestly, I really need it done. So don't even lie and don't even pretend that I don't. Anyways, it's just really important to do the stuff that makes you feel beautiful, that makes you feel, you know, rejuvenated. And for me personally, getting my hair done is one of those things. Okay. Beyond and be above that. I want to talk a little bit about habits because uh, I'm actually going through a certain different uh, habit change in my own life and I wanted to kind of reiterate how I'm able to kind of pivot and stop the old habits, start the new habits and one of them being, you know, a little bit more late night eating than I'm used to. I don't really want to eat a lot before I go to bed but sometimes when my fasting window has been super extended backwards that I'm, I'm actually hungrier. So what I'm trying to do uh, this week is up my... Um, intermittent fasting clock. So instead of me eating like say at 10 o'clock at night, or 9.30 even, I usually go to bed between 9.30 and 10, depending on what time I get up in the morning. So this week I'm kind of making an adjustment in my schedule. And when you're trying to develop a new habit, it's just important that you don't put so much pressure on yourself, number one. And number two, it's also important that you're really, really consistent. Because just like, you know, waking up in the morning and brushing our teeth or making our bed or going to work or prepping our lunches for the kids or whatever the case is, what your normal routine is in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening has become a habit for you. So certain things that you might be eating or certain things that you might be doing with your schedule after work or before work are a habit. And in order for you to change that, you just need to simply start implementing it and being, excuse me, like I said, consistent. So when I say consistency, I mean literally every day for at least 20 plus days. Get that time schedule out and adhere to it. And if you're struggling to create new healthy eating habits, then there shouldn't be an excuse really because at the end of the day, if you're doing like a healthy tracker and you're writing down the things that are actually making you feel like crap and you're not you know, adhering to that or referencing that when you're feeling like a craving for a pizza or you're feeling a craving for a bowl of chips or something that actually doesn't agree with you, even if it is a healthy food. If you are keeping a tracker, I would highly recommend that you reference it back, especially if there's something even that you are eating that's healthy, that's giving you maybe a bloated stomach or indigestion, something of that nature. Um, it might sound silly, but having stuff visually written down is super important, especially if you're trying to change a new habit and do the tracker. Because if you're implementing, so let's say, um, new workouts, or you're implementing something where you have to switch your time clock in the morning, where you're getting up a half an hour earlier, or 20 minutes earlier, if you are able to track your successes towards that specific change or that new habit, then you're more likely to achieve it. It's something similar that I've talked about before, but it's called the compound effect. And the more that you can actually track what you are doing, the more likely you're going to succeed at doing it. And a lot of the times our old habits, which are maybe not the healthiest ones, are living in our minds. And we're just actually continuing to tell ourselves that we can't do something, we can't do it, I can't you know, not drink my tea with sugar, I can't not have pizza, I can't not have dairy, it's just I can't do it. You're the one that's telling your own brain subconscious or not, that you can't do it. So why don't you start telling yourself that you can do it? Eliminating stuff that's really harmful for you and it, it all depends on how serious you are about your goals. If you really, really want to achieve something and if it is weight loss, then you need to look at your diet, you need to look at your exercise levels. And I can sit here and preach this all day long, but if you're not willing to actually do the work, then you're never gonna get anywhere. It's like the definition of insanity, doing the same thing, over and over again and expecting a different result. So I would encourage you, if we've already spoken about you know specific changes that I wanted to see in your diet and you haven't yet d done them, then I would ask why. Like, what's the point? You know, if you're not taking like the, the references or the coaching um, or the advice, then I, I just don't see the whole point of putting much pressure on yourself because you're not willing to do what it takes to lose the weight. And I know I'm raw, I know I'm real, some of you might not like you know, what I'm saying, but at the same token, it's my job to call you out on your BS. If weight loss is something, a part of your goal, and we've spoken to, uh, together about certain changes that I wanted to see in your diet or even in your activity levels and you haven't yet done it, then what's the excuse? And whatever that excuse is, you gotta throw it out the window and start over right now, not tomorrow, it, it, there's no such thing. 
You got to stop making excuses for the life that you do have. If you're not happy with where you're at, then do something about it. Plain and simple. It's not rocket science. When we talk about weight loss specifically, you got to move more, you got to eat less, you got to eat healthier. And not to mention, yes, you need to be in a caloric deficit, but we also need to take a really strong look at the reasons why you may be turning to food if you're not in the great mood or why you can only, you know, say have this one meal because you've been eating it for X amount of time before and it's so hard for you to kind of step out of your comfort zone and try something different. You know, and the thing is like sugar is probably the worst thing on the planet because it's like, it just doesn't do anything for your body. Not like a carbohydrate or a fat source or a protein would. Uh, sugar is basically going right directly to your ass. And it's not doing anything for your system because your body can't really absorb the sugar. That's why if you are somebody that drinks pop or juices that are packed with sugar or eat like refined sugar cereal, stuff of that nature, then you're, you're going to continue to gain weight and you're going to continue to not lose weight. If you're not cutting those things out of your diet, then it's, it's never going to change. And that's kind of the reality that I need to hone in on each of you today, because if you're still where you were at the beginning of this program, you know, we're almost 60 days in, then uh, truly, you need to take a look at what you've done for those last 60 days. If you've worked out, fantastic. But if you haven't made any necessary changes to your diet, then you're doing 50% of the work. And that's just the reality. Like you can't expect things to change if you're not willing to be the one that changes them. And I hope that, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be raw and I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to be very real with you because I know that deep down, you want to achieve these things and there's like that permafrost that I've talked about before that's holding you back and you're making excuses. Oh, I can't cut this out. I can't do that. I don't know. My knees hurt. I don't want to go for a walk. It's cold outside. Then seriously, you got to stop with the excuses, you know, and there should be no reason why you all in this group are not keeping up with the workouts. And if you have to even hit the reset button starting today and you go back to whatever day you want to go back, I still want to hear whether or not you are completing the workouts, you know, and a lot of us are, are keeping up with it, which is in incredible. And I love that. Um, but a lot of us are not. And I know you're probably sitting at home and you're making excuses and you're busy at work and you can't get motivated and you feel really down because we're back in COVID, then do something about it. Because the only person that can change anything that's going on in your life is you. And that's, you know, I, again, I don't have to break it down for you, but that's with everything, your career, your financial situation, your relationships, uh, your non-relationships, whatever the case is, your health, your fitness, how much you move, how much you don't move, what you're eating, what you're not eating. It's all up to you. So stop thinking about it and get it done.